Welcome to Sex Positive Gaming. I'm Annie, and today I had the chance to speak with Winter Look. He is the head developer of the completed titles, Vedavernia and Shelter, and is currently working on his newest game, Stellar Dream. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Vedavernia and Shelter were two of my earliest reviews on the channel, and I really liked what I've seen so far with your new title, Stellar Dream. What got you into making video games with adult content? Thank you for having me. It's a very nice experience. First time someone interviews me. I think it's very important to move our industry forward with the, this type of content. Uh, so the reason of why I got into the games, this uh, type of games, adult games, it's because like first I started as a supporter with a few projects and it was just such an amazing feeling when my support went through the payment like i saw that even though it was just one dollar but the feeling was so nice that i am able to support some project and it is able to grow and the uh, steam got my support but my main uh, issue with this type of games was that i'm in general fan of the games that uh, have choices and consequences and in the beginning of uh, when I started to support it, it was like 2016. I uh, really struggled to find the games with real choice. Usually when there was a choice, it was almost like a fake one. Like in the whole game, you need to earn the X amount of points by picking the right uh, options. Uh, sometimes there were hidden options. Like for example, there was a dialogue with uh, two or three options, but uh, none of them were the true correct ones. You needed to click on a clickable area around, for example, uh, give a hug instead of answering the question. And that would have given you more points. And then at the end of the game, you would have get the reward, which is sex or not. So it wasn't a real choice and I always wanted to play the game like uh, let's say Dragon Age or Mass Effect but in an adult setting. One day I just uh, thought like yeah why not uh, create it myself. I understood back then that I would not be able to enjoy it as a supporter, as a player because I know how it ends, I know uh, what is the plot and what are the characters, but I thought like yeah it would be nice uh, to do for people who are looking for this type of experience and can't find it. So that is how I created the uh, first game, The Fate of Vernia. I can go on, like, yeah, there's a lot of uh, thing because, yeah, I was doing, uh, I'm doing it for already like uh, six years. I think the first build of The Fate of Vernia was in 1st of September 2016, yeah. Fate of Vernia and Shelter are both completed titles. This is an industry where developers finishing games seems to be extremely rare. Why do you think that's such an issue? You know, like uh, when you start to create uh, your first game, you never know of uh, how many people, if any, will like your game. So there's a lot of risks of uh, doing something new. And I suppose many would like just to stick with one project because they see and they know that people are enjoying it and there's more support coming. People want to see more of this instead of something new. Uh, think this uh, often happens if the project is popular. If the project is not popular, then yeah, then it's uh, probably common to start a new one and see uh, like in a different setting or different character, different dynamics uh, to see maybe the first game is not popular because I was doing something wrong. Let me try again. And then if the support grows, then uh, yeah, most likely they will be sticking to the second. I'm sure support has a lot to do with it because if you don't have people who like what you're doing, it's like, what's the point of, of me doing this then? So getting people to go to your Patreon, go to your Steam page, go to whatever, that's really important for developers and it's really hard to do, especially when you're starting from nothing. Yeah, that is why uh, support, uh, when you just start, the support is uh, so important of like to see if people even like it, if you should continue that, because it is an investment. Even if you are doing everything yourself, it is an investment of your time. And if you spend a couple months for half a year or even more, and there's just little support or none at all, and you're just like, yeah, why, why am I doing this? Like, what is the point? I'm wasting my time. So speaking of completed, there were some people who thought that the ending of Shelter was rushed. I don't know if you've ever spoken publicly about this, but how did that make you feel? And do you think that there is any merit to that type of criticism? Well, I never spoke about it and never answered because um, most of it, of this feedback was either on the pirate sites or Steam. 
And uh, the thing about it, if we're talking about Steam, then uh, uh, it was an early access, the shell that was an early access. And uh, even though I wrote, I was completely honest about it, I wrote that, yeah, this is uh, the game is finished on uh, like 70%, and in one year it will be finished completely. I did write it on a Steam Early Access page, and that is exactly what happened after a year it got finished. But uh, some people, for some reason, either didn't read it or didn't want to believe it, and they were just uh, looking at the version that was uh, written on it, which was uh, zero point. And they really thought that it's one third of the game and there's just more, but it was used just for the development team, just to keep track on it. Uh, the thing about Shelter is that it uh, started as a side project because uh, uh, Fate of Ernia was planned to be a very big project, uh, much, uh, much bigger than it ended up to be. Like there were some sections that there was uh, time skips and such, I didn't want that. But I just counted of how many characters I have and at what pace the art is being delivered. And I understood that uh, to like finish it as I wanted, I will have to spend like I don't know ten years, if not more. And like yeah, some cuts had to be done with the uh, earlier. But on that time, I thought like yeah, let's start the second project because I still have uh, while I'm waiting for the art, uh, the text is done. I'm waiting just for the art, and I still have a lot of energy, a lot of creativity and uh, some budget to invest and i thought like yeah let's uh, make a second game that was shelter and right uh, from the start it was planned as a small project just small side project for people to enjoy while waiting for the earnia but kind of unexpectedly for me it uh, did blow up like the support just can't compare before i started to develop shelter and after it's just night and day but uh, the problem is that the game from the start was planned as a small project and no matter how I try, I can't like justify that it starts to drag in the middle or closer to the end. Like the relationships uh, and everything, it was fast paced. There was uh, not like too much uh, conflict or struggles in the uh, character relationships. Did you have like the whole story already planned out? Yeah, I did want uh, the final chapter, the final battle to be similar to the, I would say like uh, Mass Effect 2 suicide mission of like you're doing some upgrades and depending on your choices, upgrades and relationships, there will be slight or massive variations because yeah, it does have uh, a few bad endings as well as good and neutral. After reading this criticism, I was thinking like, yeah, maybe I should return, maybe I should add uh, something more. But I just don't see of how I can justify this uh, additional content. It will uh, just be more scenes, but we more or less tried all of the possible positions or fetishes that I'm comfortable with adding. And it will be just more of the same. And uh, the text already started to get repetitive. So your games tend to have similar flavor themes involving romance and corruption. What led you to focus on those aspects, and are there other flavors that you want to explore in future games? Well, it's once again started with Ernia. When I, like, the day that I started to plan it, it was like late evening, and I thought of like, yeah, it will have a choices, and uh, you will be able to either romance or corrupt. At first, I did plan with Ernia to have a romance, like through the player's choice, uh, dialogue choice, but once again using the orb. But then I thought like, yeah, if, is it truly a romance if you're using the magical item to get there? No, not really. And people who are looking for the romance, they're most likely looking for it to be the result of their action. And it being like a true love, true feelings. So in the shelter, like, yeah, thought of keeping it, but without the magical item, keeping it more like, once again, through your actions, but uh, of a more, can't say evil, because some some say it is evil, some say no, I'm just dominant, so everyone have their own opinion about that. But uh, yeah, I just think it is uh, interesting to explore two sides of uh, romance or corruption, plus the possibility of the harem, or romance harem or corruption harem. It's just interesting to see uh, the same character, but uh, with different attitudes. Because it can be not only the scenes change, but also the dialogue, uh, the behavior, the actions outside of the interactions with the player. 
and I just find it very interesting. And in general, I do uh, love uh, games with choices a lot, so if, with replay value. And you know, even if uh, a player chooses to be only romantic, only good, like 100%, I think it's still nice to know that there is a different option, that it was your choice to be good and not just someone holding your hand and saying, no, 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 you need to do this instead of that. And then at the end of the day, the player feels like good about himself that, yeah, this is what I achieved. This was my, my choice and now I'm getting a happy ending because I deserve it. Given how Steam has increased the number of games that it has banned for content, including games with no sexual content, including Chaos Head Noah, how concerned are you as a developer? Well, I am actually not concerned at all because uh, Steam does have some rules, but there's not such a big list compared to the Patreon. I'm more concerned, I would say, if the patron changes the rules, because I do remember how they changed it like in 2018. J just bam, and that was it. And there were so many banned games, banned uh, pages, because yeah, they uh, the creators didn't even have enough time to change this content. Like a day before it was allowed, today is not allowed. <laughs> and they just check and say, yeah, this is uh, banned. What did you expect? Why did you make this game? But like, yeah, I was developing for so many years. Why this? Give me some time. Uh, as of Steam, like, no, there's not that many rules. But yeah, I understand that sometimes it can be weird. The problem is that you can't submit the game for the Steam support just to check it. You don't have a second chance. You can't just submit and say, yeah, is this okay? Then uh, no, you're submitting the game. This is not okay. Bye bye. It doesn't matter if you change the name. It doesn't matter if you like change the content and resubmit. No, you can submit a different game. But if it's the same game, it doesn't matter. And there's so many situations like that. So yeah, I would say I'm not concerned, but uh... It's not really nice of how they can't check it uh, before submitting because uh, I'm sure this whole partnership of the adult developers and Steam is uh, very profitable for both sides. So they could have invested into it into more support personnel to do, as I'm uh, saying it, of checking it before a submission. I don't see a real problem with that. Uh, but yeah, let us hope that uh, it will be just an exception of what happened, that the game doesn't even have any adult content, but just violence and got uh, banned. Let's uh, hope that it was just uh, a mistake, an exception, and that in general the list that we have, which is basically just underage and high school, that uh, it will be like that and nothing more. Because it makes uh, the most sense, uh, it is justified to ban such content. So. Access to sexual content has now been consistently shown to reduce crime and improve mental health. Yet there seems to be an intense focus in the media to only talk about a small number of people who use it as a form of self-medication to cope with unchecked mental illness. What do you think we can do better to get the message out that video games with adult content actually make society safer and healthier overall? That's... Uh... It's a doozy. That's... No, no, that's uh, interesting philosophical questions. Like there's uh, a lot uh, that can be discussed in here. Yeah, yeah nothing about um, real personal things. Just I want to know. I want to know what you think. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well, in general, I do agree that it is a good thing the adult content because it is only natural. It's nothing unnatural. It is natural and. Uh, it is normal to have sex and uh, we should be more open about it. And I think that uh, if we're not open about it, then in general, it does create more problems. Like if there's not enough information about it, then a person just becomes more close on himself or herself. Like they don't know what to do. They don't know how, like they do have uh, these feelings or this urges and they don't know how to express themselves because it is forbidden or so yeah in general it is uh, good to educate and uh, in general to have this content because not everyone in an equal position some uh, people like don't want to get married for example don't want a relationship but still have the needs and the urges it is uh, normal and good to have this content for people to be more open about it how do we prove that 
just with more studies, I suppose. You know, the problem is, it's, it is the similar as with the uh, violent games. Like, there can be so many million of copies sold of the GTA, for example. But uh, the media will still pick up one case of uh, some crazy person trying to rob a taxi driver to see if it's if it is as easy as in the game and everyone are like ah see the video games are making uh, people violent and the same is here the media will pick up the worst adult game possible of saying like yeah do we want everyone to play this do we want to call this normal and there's just like some insanity with uh, gore or... all right so Two of your games have now taken place in a future setting, including your latest, Stellar Dream, that takes place on a colony ship. What do you think the future has in store for our species, and how close do you think we are leaving the planet, the planet as part of some type of exospheric revolution? Yeah, you see, there's uh, almost the whole uh, answer was in question. Because uh, do we really need to invest so much money of exploring other planets, other uh, universes, galaxies, if uh, we can't take care of our own planet. Like, there are so many concerns of poverty, of the ecological situations, of the wars happening, but we're like, no, we're going to space. <laughs> we need to go deeper, we need to go further, we need to enslave aliens. <laughs> like, what is the plan? Why do we need to... Ex like, I get it, it is very exciting, but... Uh, yeah, given what's happened over the last few years, I totally see where you're coming from. And I also heard that uh, if we're talking about the our planet, like the seas are not even that explored, like deep down underwater. There are so many interesting types of fishes that we will never see on uh, shallow water. Like the deeper we go, the more interesting. Like why we don't explore that? It is on our planet. Maybe there's something interesting there. <laughs> But since it is a game, it's not like a, a call for action. Like, yeah, look how awesome the space is, the colony ship, and there's so many waifus, let's go. <laughs> uh, it's, just, it's just a fantasy. So, yeah, I think every person once in a while was thinking, like, yeah, are we the only living beings in the universe and such and such. So, yeah, it's just a game to explore these uh, fantasies, these uh, ideas, because why not? But it has nothing to do with the real world because the real world issues are very serious and hard to take in serious. And, but even if we're investing and we're uh, traveling into space, I don't think that uh, in our life or our children will uh, meet aliens. This is uh, too early for all of this. So uh, it makes even more sense to just explore it in the in games and the fantasies and such. And, after having fun returning to the Earth issues. So, the space for games with adult content is rapidly growing. What advice would you give people who are looking to get into this industry and make their first game? Uh, to other developers, I would say that try to, uh, if you're creating aliens, try to create them unique yet still humanoid because the further you go into something weird or something completely different from a human, the less chance that people will be that interested in it uh, in a romantic way. Talking sure, like you can create a, a giant talking squid and uh, people will be curious, but it's not about romance, uh, said squid. Like look once again in the Mass Effect, the most popular alien species is Ari. So, not that far from a human. And why I'm saying it, because uh, whenever you go to the forum or the conversation, people are saying like, yeah, I hope it's the aliens are not just uh, blue humans or green humans. <laughs> but, like, despite this talk, uh, people more or less are looking for that. All right, well, that's good advice. Keep your aliens more human-like. All righty. So, is there anything else you want to share with your fans or people who may be interested in your games? Well, we recently released the public build, which is available on Itch.io and Newgrounds. So everyone uh, free to check it out and leave a comment on what they think and decide for themselves before they're supporting. We don't have any plans of releasing in Steam Early Access. Uh, we will release in 
uh, the Stellar Dream when it's a complete state, we think it will be the best approach. Once again, for the people not to have the uh, false expectations that this game will be just developed forever or many, many years to come. So set it right away of what to expect or what you find and what will be there. Also, wh whoever is interested in art of uh, Shelter or Stellar Dream find it uh, very good. They're free to follow Abelisk, our artist, on Twitter. Sometimes he's open for the commission, like he is uh, working on the game full time, but once in a while he's open for the commissions and fun art. So if you would like to check him out, yeah, free feel free to do so. All right. Cool. All right. So thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited you want to continue to grow. And I think you are awesome for doing this with me. Thank you very much. And I'm excited to see your channel grow because uh, I think what you are doing is uh, very important for the industry and uh, to create this, uh, to expand this community and of reviews and videos. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time, no shaming, just gaming. Thanks to all this month's support on Patreon. I wouldn't have been able to do this without you all. All right, I'm going to start over. <laughs> all right. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me for today. <laughs> I can't even talk now. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Whew. Okay.